Okay, th firstly, thank you to BRE for the, uh, for the invitation to, uh, to be here today. Uh, we're often invited to speak on uh, retrofit or Green Deal issues, particularly relating to quality. Um, quality, however, is not part of the building regulations. As Alex has already mentioned, they are um, beautifully vague regulations, I think you, I think you put it, so, in, in parts, yeah, but th they don't actually include quality. There is a requirement to achieve building regulations. Those regulations set certain standards, but those standards do not actually include quality of the finished product, um, product on site. I would like you, in sort of keeping with how Russell um, spoke, I would like you to take part in this if you could. Um, give me a hard time if you can, because talking about building control, talking about building regulations is, well, it's boring to a certain extent, because building regulations themselves are quite boring. Uh, building control, if you're actually involved in it, it can be, it can be, it can be sort of a bit more, um, a bit more interesting. So, so please, please join in if you can. The sort of things, okay, the sort of things I'm going to cover are, are we as an industry potentially concentrating on the wrong areas? Uh, are we, um, you know, should we be looking at fabric rather than bling? A whole building approach, again, many speakers have, um, uh, uh, have sort of talked about a whole building approach. Um, talk about compliance and quality. I have a feeling that a lot of uh, retrofit building work is not subject to building control supervision uh, where it should be. Uh, some of the common problems, what are we doing at LABC? Is it, is it all our fault? Because often um, things like the performance gap is often, uh, often sort of laid at our door. It, it really is us that um, should, be, should be making things better on site. I'll also tell you all about the new part L and when, that's, uh, when that will be available to you or not. So um, the existing housing stock is responsible for 27% of carbon emissions uh, and there continues to be a growing initiative to, to, to sort of address that. Uh, existing buildings have and will always have a far greater negative impact on climate change than any new buildings. Obviously, loads of new buildings being built. We've talked about the performance gap of um, uh, design to, to as built, but they're a hell of a lot more efficient than the, uh, than the existing building stock that's, um, that's out there. Uh, we do have a problem. What are we, we going to do about it? At LABC, we don't think, uh, and sorry to any um, manufacturers of, uh, of EcoBling that are sitting out there, we don't think EcoBling is the, uh, is the solution. Uh, there's a quote there from a, a visiting professor at the University of Bath. He explains about, you know, a lot of the things that you stick to the outside of your house are really there um, to make it look good, really there to make you look good, to, to, to suggest, that you, um, suggest that you care about polar bears and penguins rather than, um, rather than your gas bill. But uh, uh, the, 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 there are two agendas. I, I'm, I'm not dismissing the, uh, the, the sort of green agenda at the, uh, at the same time. But uh, I mean, how many of the wind turbines that a, uh, a popular DIY um, retailer, um, how many of those are actually still fixed to the outside of people's properties? You could go along in the 90s. You could order one of those from, uh, from that particular retailer. Someone, like, someone would come along and fit it to your, fit it to your property. How many of those do you see, um, do you see nowadays? I, I think I've seen one on the back of, a, uh, of an allotment shed on the train down into Euston. So uh, that's, that's all you see of those that they've, they, they've, they've literally had it. If you put a wind turbine on your, on your, on your house, it's gonna be efficient, it'll probably pull your house down in all fairness. So. Um, so real improvement, I think, is fabric. Let's look at insulation, roofs, walls, floors. Air leakage, obviously, glazing an efficient boiler, one that's often often overlooked. Then let's look at renewables. Renewables have got a place, but, but not to start with. Solar PV, solar thermal heat pumps, wood burning stoves. Now, I'll, I'll just show you a photograph now of, a, uh, of an example where things can go wrong. Um, sorry, turbines again. So there's uh, two retrofit projects that have gone up on a property at different times. So one was, uh, one was the solar panels and one was the, the wood-burning stove. Neither of those were subject to local authority building control inspection. They should have been subject to some sort of building control inspection. Um, you can probably spot the, uh, the, the possibility of, uh, of problems to, to come with that particular, that particular layout. So when is building control compliance necessary? 
Uh, virtually all retrofit measures are classed as building work for the purpose of building regulations and uh, they do require building regulation approval. You can get that by a variety of methods. Obviously the best one is through local authority building control, but uh, there are obviously competent person schemes that are out there as well. So um, competent person schemes tend to concentrate on things in isolation, whereas a building control section or body could, uh, could concentrate on the whole, the, the whole sort of house approach. Um, other bits that affect um, building regulations, if you are um, doing any building work, you can't make any of these other areas worse. Uh, if you do, then again, that is work that's subject to, to, to building, control, uh, building control approval. Um, renovation of thermal elements as well. This is a really helpful section of, uh, of the building regulations that says when 50% of the surface area of an indiv individual element or 25% of the total building envelope is being repaired, or upgraded, the whole element has to, has to be upgraded to current standards. Does that happen all the time, Alex? No. I'm sure it, I'm sure it does in Brighton, but uh, it, it doesn't well, happen in reality. Yeah. Yeah. I don't write them, but they are shocking, aren't they? Yeah. They they really are difficult to, uh, to to sort of follow. Someone mentioned consequential improvements as well. Um, uh, will we go back to consequential improvements? They're still in the building regs. Um, often, often overlooked and forgotten, but consequential improvements are still in Part L. Um, it can be easy to achieve things like that with cavity and loft, in, loft insulation, but what about solid walls, sloping ceilings? The previous speaker mentioned um, about um, loft insulation and ensuring that there is adequate roof ventilation. You wouldn't believe how many times we see people sealing roof voids because they think it's a passage of air. So they will actually take the insulation into um, and across where the ventilation is actually going into a roof. We'll be called back in two or three months when roof spaces are absolutely sodden with, um, with sort of uh, condensation and, um, and, 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 and moisture. So, um, so really how to comply, obviously use building control or use an installer that's registered with DCLG as being uh, within a competent person's, um, competent person's scheme. Another particular favourite of mine is um, all of those buildings are the same along that, uh, along that street, but they all pose different challenges. And I would suggest that other than some really sort of traditional, probably sort of social housing stock, every single house is different and it will pose a different challenge when, you, uh, when you're looking at, uh, at retrofit. Uh, anyone that does sort of retrofit, retrofit work regularly will know how difficult um, uh, a sort of building like that um, could possibly um, could possibly be. Um, then, uh, really, when you are setting out on a retrofit project, are homeowners really prepared for um, reality? Do they know what it's going to actually be like for them when they go through that retrofit experience? If you to follow the letter of the building regulations. Um, you could be looking at substantial thickening works of internal walls or, or external walls to, to actually get properties up to, um, up to value. So again, communication, a lot of spe speakers have spoken about that, communication really important so the householder will know what they will get as part of the scheme that, um, that you will be uh, delivering. That's a particular challenge, that property. You look at that from, say, an external wall insulation um, perspective, and you think, well, that looks a bit, uh, that looks a bit tricky. I'll probably, have, uh, I'll probably have a look at the inside. Any, any property inside is going to have fixtures and fitties inside. It's going to be an absolute sort of you know, nightmare for the, um, for the occupants of that property to actually get it right. How many times, Alex, do you go into properties like that when you've just got to say get lost for six months well probably three months come back in you know and we'll, we'll give you a proper finish you can't retrofit houses like that while occupants are still um while occupants are still in there if you do um well you're a better man than uh, better man than i am disruption um lovely staircase that's what it's going to look like if you start to uh, be fitting internal uh, internal wall insulation so loads of disruption um for the uh, for the residents some of the pitfalls that we see, um, not fitting rigid insulation with, uh, with rebates. When you are putting dry lining to the inside of a property, you have to 
work with absolute joinery precision. It's not just the case of dabbing insulation onto walls, butting up boards. It, it really isn't. It, you have to actually have proper skills on site to be able to actually install those boards properly. If you don't, any gap will allow condensation through as part of um, sort of pencil lines uh, and you will then get um, sort of compensa uh, condensation uh, occurring back into, the, uh, back into the property. You've got to get the balance right between filling voids completely and um, having ventilation where it's, uh, where it's required. Bay windows present a massive problem uh, on site. Loads of areas there within a bay window where things can go wrong. So there's all sorts of different constructions in bay windows, both above and below bay windows. Um, window reveals. Uh, you've got sloping ceiling elements to um, part of that as well. Um, all sorts of problems to actually get right. If you don't get it right, if you don't get one particular junction right, you may as well have not bothered because you'll get air leakages through um, other parts of, uh, of, those, uh, of those sort of windows. Um, a DIY installation, again, you can imagine as a local authority um, building control section, we see a lot of people doing uh, retrofit work themselves. They really, really don't know what they're doing in many, uh, many instances. Trying to, um, trying to get, uh, say, a DIY wire to, um, to fix board into a sloping part of a ceiling. Uh, again, you might as well not bother because you'll be, you'll be getting more problems at ineffective joints than you will by actually not, um, not putting that sort of insulation there in the, uh, in the first time. Material cost is low, but getting a decent contractor that can do a decent job costs money. You need to pay money for a decently skilled and trained contractor that knows what they're doing. Uh, sloping ceilings, I've, I've probably already, uh, already mentioned, they're difficult to get to. Um, you could use internal dry lining uh, uh, over sloping areas to replace sort of sloping areas, but why, why bother losing character in, uh, in properties? Uh, you really need to pay attention at, at, at areas that are not square. Uh, not all buildings are, um, are square, so you really need to pay attention at the, at the relevant, uh, relevant areas. Uh, window reveals, again, I've mentioned, most of those are not deep enough to do effective um, internal, uh, internal works. Again, into the attention to detail to avoid cold bridging. If you don't, again, you might as well not bother. We've seen some horrendous things on site when we've, uh, when we've been carrying out um, inspections. Um, floors, um, some are quite easy to, uh, to, 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 to sort of improve. Some, particularly timber floors, can introduce all sorts of problems, especially if ventilation is not there already, uh, and it isn't the most pleasant work. Um, someone mentioned about having a small electrician. Um, for this sort of work, again, you need another small, um, small sort of contractor, but hopefully one that's got long arms. So uh, nice and small, long arms is perfect for the, uh, for the, retrofit, uh, the retrofit market. Uh, solar, uh, I'm not here to dismiss uh, bling that goes onto, on, onto roofs and, uh, and things like that. There is a place for things like solar and PV, but let's, you know, the, the amount of times I drive past properties where solar PV has been placed on roofs that's not south facing. Um, it ain't going to be brilliant. Uh, it'll probably do something uh, first thing in the morning, last thing at night, but it's not going uh, to give you the improvements that you're, uh, that you're really looking for. Um, We've been called out to roofs that have become dangerous after um, solar has been put, solar PV has been put onto, uh, put onto roofs if it's not fixed properly or if people have damaged roof tiles once they've, uh, when, once they've been up there um, sort of fitting it. Um, it. It probably isn't as efficient as some people say, but uh, there are good examples, so I won't, uh, I won't just dismiss solar um, sort of uh, completely. All houses are unique, as I've, um, as I've mentioned. Um, there aren't really that many um, quick fixes. Um, there is no universal panacea. Uh, every improvement requires good skills and good labor on site. Um, and really think about um, the time that it, um, that it sort of involves to get to. Social factors as well. Um, spoken on many platforms about Green Deal and about how people will make finance decisions. I think I've pretty much covered everyone there uh, to say why they won't go for it. Alex mentioned things like VAT exemptions and making things a lot easier. That is exactly um, what we ought to be doing. Um, you know, we've got to incentivise the people that live in houses to actually make these improvements. And the way to do that is so they can see that the work can be done properly, see that it can be done by competent contractors, 
and see that it will make a difference on their gas bill. That is the only way that we can make them uh, make people realise that they, they need to carry out um, need to carry out improvements. Help is available through um, through building control. Again, consider employing a qualified designer or project manager such as Russell. Now there aren't many people such as Russell out there. There are a lot of people that will come and sell you internal wall insulation. There are a lot of people that will sell you external wall insulation. There are loads that will sell you solar and PV. There's not many that will actually coordinate it all together in one project and deliver you a project that will offer real term improvements. For us as building control, if we've got somebody like Russell coordinating a project, it is so easy for us. They know the pitfalls. They've seen the pitfalls before. They know how to deliver a property that will deliver improvements and they know how to test that, um, test that building afterwards to make sure it is delivering those improvements. Do your research thoroughly. Um, everyone's heard about the performance gap. Potentially, if we're not careful, the retrofit market will deliver another performance gap to industry. If people are out there selling different improvements retrofit-wise that are not going to deliver performance benefits at the end of the day, that is exactly where we're going to get to again is a performance gap in the retrofit market alongside the performance gap in the new build market. So I think we can work on um, the performance gap together. Um, it's not all about building control. It's not all our fault. I tr trust me, it isn't. But... Um, you know, we would love to work with people that can do a proper job uh, and actually de deliver some um, some real-term improvements on site. The builder's book is aimed at new build, but there's some excellent guidance in that. I would say that I was part of um, part of the group that helped to um, to put it together. Um, we've also got our registered construction details uh, that are freely available on LABC's website. They give you ideas of how you can use um, insulation project pr uh, products where you can get continuity probably not a good one to put up for a retrofit picture but there are ones that would be uh, that would be suitable we also register construction products that offer um, uh, that demonstrate compliance with building regulations and three of your exhibitors out there today almost all of their product ranges are actually registered with LABC that demonstrate compliance with um, with building regulations so really from our point of view continuity of insulation good air tightness Minimalise thermal bridging and avoid thermal bypass is, is really the way forward with any sort of retrofit work. Said I'd finish with the new part L in 2016. Um, well, um, the DCLG were due to report to the European Commission by June 2017 on whether the current requirements in regulations were cost optimal. And um, an uplift may or may not be required de depending on whether um, the regulations were sort of cost optimal. Um, where we're going to go after Brexit with new building regulations, um, I don't know. Uh, there was a report produced um, a couple of months ago about where we went with, went with building regulations. I can't see any significant changes with building regulations sort of um, coming in the next year, probably two. So the ones that are out there, they're not brilliant, but Please, if you are going to do any building work, do it to those building regulations and do involve your building control section that can give you some advice, give you some guidance and hopefully avoid some of the pitfalls that I've, uh, that I've spoken about. Thank you.